What's up, Gales fans? Tim Fitzgerald here with Allie Bamberger of the women's basketball team. Allie, we're going to get to know you here in yes. this Gales spotlight for the month of February. Can I start with the fun stuff? Let's do it. Okay, let's, yeah, let's jump it. right to the fun stuff. I normally save the fun facts for the end. We're going to jump into it here. Let's do it. Any nicknames you've had over the years? Give us some nicknames. Well, so it's always Al. Okay. And then I came to St. Mary's and obviously Al, Coach Al. So um, I really love AB. Uh, okay. Those are my initials. I go by that. And then my name's pretty short, so okay. Allie. But AB for sure. Were you ever subject to in your <laughs> tween years? I've had, we've had autocorrect bite Bamberg at a hamburger on us. <laughs> I'm assuming kids yeah. had some fun with that one. Oh yeah, okay. that was a good one growing up, <laughs> All for right. sure. I find myself, let me know if this one's okay. I'm your official scorer, so as I'm punching the stats in, somebody's telling me, okay, layup 33. I'll say, I'll call you Bam Bam in my head, like the Flintstones. Yeah, Is I like that, that one. Okay. Yeah, I, I've, I've heard that one a couple times. My dad was Bambi when he played Ooh. sports. That was a good one. Um, but yeah, nothing really with my last name, but Bam Bam's a good one. Okay, I have to use that. You. I, I like that one. That. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about pregame routine. Give me that okay. one. Um, meal, yeah. hype up music. What are the, what are the go to's there? Yeah, I mean, our team uh, has a speaker in our locker room, so we sometimes listen to music out loud. Pregame meal is usually AK the same. Mm. Um, I don't really have any pregame rituals. I know okay. some people like to put the left sock on and then the right sock on in the shoe. I'm not super. Um, you know, ritualistic like that, but I do have time things. So I know at 85 minutes I'm coming out to shoe. I put my little uh, heating knee thing on. Um, but other than that, I wouldn't say I'm too like pregame ritual specific. Gotcha. Yeah. Give me some guilty pleasures. Mm. I love asking this one. Uh, like a bad reality show Ooh. or maybe some song that you like that yeah. people would be like, you like this song? That's kind of a guilty pleasure for you. Um, I'm a real Housewives fanatic. I watch every single uh, city. I love it. I love it. It's so entertaining. They're super short. They're like an hour, but they're they're so they're so corny. Like you can tell it's <laughs> super drama, but it's just I've watched it forever. My mom used to watch it when I was like teenager and so I just happened to, to catch on to that and I watch every single city of Housewife. Let's yeah. do some favorites then. Favorite, uh, favorite recording artist who's on Ooh. your playlist and your, your, your iPod. There yeah, most. I definitely say I'm more of an R&B gal. Mm -hmm. um, I love some Kehlani. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say she's my favorite. That's the go-to. Yeah. Okay. On the flip side, let's do some dislikes. Food, yeah. song, recording artist, show, any of them, hit me with it. Um, I would say uh, food wise, I'm a big texture person. Okay. So I don't really like avocados, mm. uh, tomatoes. <laughs> um, yeah, super. I'm not a picky eater, but big texture person. Um, I would say one of my biggest pet peeves is uh, slow walkers. Mm. Um, so airports is a place <laughs> that I find myself getting a little frustrated. But yeah, those probably those ones. Those are the dislikes. Yeah. Let's talk about your style of play. Okay. And I'm going to tie it into one last little fun fact talk. Mm -hmm. When I watch you, I equate you, and, and a lot of centers, I would say, a lot of post players, equate that to a run game to make the football comparison. Mm -hmm. you're, you're the running back out mm -hmm. there to me. It's good to establish you early, you know, pound it down low, you salt away the clock, you're scoring points. You're, you can shoot three, so you're like a, a running back who also catch passes okay. out there. <laughs> so we're going to talk about that, but first let's talk NFL. Yeah. We're going to go into your style of play. You're a big Rams fan. Huge, yeah. How'd that come about? So my dad was a Rams fan all growing up, um, and then they were originally in L.A., yeah. and then when they moved to St. Louis, we kind of just stayed Rams fans, just didn't really change. And then when they moved back to L.A., mm -hmm. it, was, it was super fun, great timing. Um, we didn't really get into NFL until I was in like high school, okay. but once we did get into it, me and my brother are huge Rams fans, same with my dad. Um, we've been to, I've been to one game, my brother and my dad got to go to the NFC Championship game last year where they beat the Niners, and okay. then when they won the Super Bowl last year, it was super, super fun, so. Now, yeah. I used to be an employee of the St. Louis Rams. Okay, cool. And when I moved out here, I went to some 49er Ooh. Rams games, yeah. and it was tough. That's what I'm asking you about. It wasn't yeah. the greatest atmosphere for me. Well, I don't think life. we've beat them in the regular season in four years, but we beat, we beat them when it matters, so <laughs> that's all that matters. <laughs> any uh, any inter-locker room rivalries with your teammates? Oh, yeah. A couple of the international girls have decided to become bandwagon 49er fans, <laughs> so that's so much fun, the rivalry there. No, but it's it's fun you know you have little um chit chats with them when the games are going on Leia has become a huge Niners fan she will tell you everything about them which is awesome she actually That's knows cool. the players where a lot of people who are fans don't know anybody <laughs> but yeah Leia's pretty knowledgeable about the Niners now so there's a good rivalry between us that's awesome let's yeah. go back to your style of play okay. then 
And were you <laughs> always a post player growing up? Was that you yeah. right away? Okay. So I would say I was always taller, okay. um, never really uh, developed my guard play. Uh, my dad says that he regrets when I was younger sticking me in the post. It worked out, yeah. but I was always a post player growing up. And then I didn't really develop my shot until later high school, okay. around my junior year. Um, and then I just worked consistently at it. And it turned out I had a, a pretty decent shot, but I was always pretty much back to the basket. What was the impetus for expanding your game out uh, for deeper range? Was it kind of just the way the style of the game had come about the way it changes to basketball? Yeah, a little bit. I also think around my sophomore year of high school, I was kind of like, I can do this thing in okay. college. Like I was, I was pretty much aware that I was going to play at the next level at that point. And so my dad and I decided that the next uh, level up to my game, instead of just throwing a bunch of guard play in there would be to shoot, okay. to shoot the three. So once I kind of realized I was going to play in college, I would say we implemented um, shooting, worked on it way more. Um, and it just, it happened to work out. So you come here to St. Mary's where yeah. it's kind of a family feel for you. I, I feel like I'm a good acquaintance of your grandfather's <laughs> now, just out of the process. So what, what has that experience oh, been like playing here at home? Yeah, you know, growing up, I always came to St. Mary's games, mm. men's and women's, because my dad played here. Uh, I love it here. I knew when I was picking a college, I kind of wanted to do something different. So originally I didn't choose here, but as soon as I knew um, that Washington wasn't going to work out, I knew I wanted to come here. From, from, the moment, from the moment I entered the transfer portal, I knew what I wanted. And so when I came here, I was very proud, you know, to have a dad who played here and was very successful. Um, and it's kind of like a little like a little chip on my shoulder, like I'm Bamberger's daughter, but I want to come to St. Mary's and make a name for myself. Um, and then, you know, having my family co close and them able to come to every single game, you know, it's amazing. And it's not just my parents coming to games, it's my grandpa, my aunts, my uncles, my yeah. cousins, my mom's work friends, yeah. like to have that experience, you know, it's, it's once in a lifetime. And then another thing that I love is that because my family's so close, they're able to provide a second family for some of the girls on the team who don't have it. You know, we had Thanksgiving at my house and that's something that will touch my heart forever. And it makes me so happy that I have that experience. So I know some people have maybe felt that adds a little pressure. Has it added comfort for you then? Oh, for sure. Okay. I mean, yeah, it adds pressure, but at the end of the day, like, it, I would say it's way more comforting than it is pressure. Um, you know, my dad always tells me all the time how proud he is that I get to play at his alma mater. Yeah. Um, but I, we have a little rivalry going on saying that I want to beat whatever he did here. Yeah. So it, it, it's, yeah, pressure, but I would definitely say more, more fun and happy and lighthearted. Yeah. You're an allied health science yeah. major. Yeah, yeah, what yeah. made you choose that? So growing up, I always was way more interested in science. My mom's a nurse, she delivers babies. Uh, she just recently switched jobs, but she's still in the healthcare profession. Um, I always knew I wanted to do something like that, okay. but the problem is with playing basketball, you can't um, do nursing or a medical field because you, can't, you don't have the time to do clinical hours. And so looking into majors, St. Mary's had the perfect opportunity where you take all of the prereqs without getting the um, clinical hours done. And so recently I've discovered I want to become a physician's assistant, which will require more school after I'm done with basketball in college. Um, but getting my BS is pretty, pretty impressive. I'm really um, excited about that. School is always something I've loved and I take it very seriously. I'm very proud of my schoolwork. Um, and so I knew I wanted to do something in the healthcare and I'm so grateful that St. Mary's had that opportunity for me. You came to St. Mary's after your time as a Washington Husky, suffered a bad knee injury yes. there at Washington, what, uh, multiple surgeries, mm -hmm. a year and a half of rehab. What, I guess compare and contrast your mindset when it first happens and you're going through all that rehab and now having sort of climbed that mountain, yeah. you know, the, the mindsets comparing the two then. Yeah, I mean, when it first originally happened, I had never experienced a serious injury. I twisted some ankles, sprained some fingers. So I didn't really know what to expect. Uh, it was something I was going completely blind into. Same with my parents. My dad played sports his whole life, had never had a serious injury. Um, so it was something that I knew I was gonna need a lot of support for. Um, COVID was kind of my blessing because I was able to come home for it. I had surgery at home. I rehabbed at home while everything was shut down. Mm. Where if, if COVID didn't happen, I probably would have had to have surgery up in Seattle and done all that. So very grateful for COVID in that aspect that I was able to come home and rehab at home with my support system yeah. around me. Um, but when it first happened, I was, I wasn't super upset. Like granted, I was very devastated that it had happened, but I had the mindset that I'm going to come back stronger for this. 
as you get into the process and it's the monotony of doing it every single day, you start to doubt yourself. You start to, you start to say like, is this really gonna be worth it? Am I gonna be the same? You know, it, it gets so tiring and it's just the, the doubt and the questions that leave you wondering if you're ever gonna be the same player or, or such. Um, and then having it be 16 months in two surgeries, you know, the usual is nine months. You start running around six months. I wasn't running until the nine month mark. So for me, I was comparing. I was comparing myself to previous injuries of ACL people that I knew, and I wasn't similar. I was way, way behind. Um, and I'm very grateful for the athletic trainer I had during that time um, because he, he kept me, he kept me believing in, um, believing in myself. And one of the things that I was struggling was was believing in myself so rehab took forever and then um coming back was one of the hardest things i think i've ever had to face okay. um you have that fear so for me my acl injury was a contact injury uh, someone else fell into my leg which caused me to do it um and so you have that fear you know i i was is very, this gonna work can i yeah put exactly yeah. and you know you saw that big brace i had last year i was super anxious um but I will say it's kind of like riding a bike. As soon as you get into it, it's like it all comes back to you. You forget everything else. And that's something I'm super grateful for is just that support that I knew I had, you know, and then my teammates were amazing during that time too. Like, you know, I came in as a new person. I had just tore my ACL. No one really knew what type of player I was, but they all had the faith and belief in me. So that was amazing. Um, but to have the year I had after the injury just really propelled my belief in myself, okay. um, which was amazing. But I would definitely say that doubt never goes away. You know, you're not the same as you were before, but you know it's strong, yeah. but you kind of, you question yourself a little bit. So it, it definitely is something that has changed my life, but I would say for the better. Um, I still doubt myself every once in a while. You know, when I go down with a little tweak, I'm like, ooh, like mm -hmm. you, you, you hold your breath, you yeah. get scared. And I'm sure everyone else know, does that knowing yeah. I've done it before <laughs> as soon as I go down. But um, I'm very grateful for the experience. It's very humbling. Um, and it's definitely changed me into a better person. So. They don't give away a comeback player of the year award in the WCC, but you got that newcomer of yes. the year award. You made first team yeah. last year. Did that sort of validate like, oh, I can still do this. Yeah, no, for sure. And I think going into the year, I had no expectations. Okay. I didn't know what I was going to play like. I didn't know what it was going to be like. Um, so having that was kind of like, oh, maybe I can do this thing, yeah. you know? Sometimes you doubt yourself and you're yeah. like, wow, when you get those awards, yes, the awards are great, but they just kind of validated how I was feeling. But um, the awards don't mean as much as being able to play the sport you love, yeah. so for sure. You mentioned uh, wanting to go into the health field yeah. after graduation. Mm -hmm. Any thoughts of playing professionally though? Yeah and then seeing how far you can go with that before going back. Yeah, to, yeah, for sure. I think something that I've talked to my parents about, which is really awesome, is to apply to PA school. All of your prereqs are good for 10 years okay. up to when you graduate. So I have a 10 year window um, if I want to play overseas or if I want to travel, whatever I want to mm -hmm. do. Um, I definitely do think if the opportunity arises that I'd love to take it. You know, my dad played professionally and he says it's some of the best years of his life. Okay. Um, so I definitely think that'd be fun if it presents itself. If it doesn't, then it doesn't, but that's definitely something I'm keeping my eye open for. Let's finish with this. You're going to play WNBA commissioner for okay. me for a second here along those lines of, of professional basketball. Something I'm interested in, you know, the league is beginning to turn a profit. You know, mm. money's starting to come yes. in. They're, they're at, you know, a crossroads with, with charter flights. Some, some teams can afford them and some yeah. can't. They're trying to figure out that balance. Give me your list when Ali Bamberger becomes WNBA <laughs> commissioner, like a, your first few points yeah. of things you would like to, to tackle yeah. or try to implement. Okay. Um, I think one thing that the WNBA has been talking about is expansion, mm. you know, adding more teams. You have so much talent in so little spots. Yeah. Um, I think it'd be really cool to have a team in Oakland. You know, Oracle's not being used anymore. Me I too. think that'd be really cool. Yeah, me too. Um, with all the talent we have in the Bay Area with basketball, mm. I mean, you have so many products coming out of here. That'd be really cool in expansion. But I definitely think expansion is necessary to um, bring more awareness to the league. You have so much talent. Um, so that's definitely one. Um, I'm totally into the Twitter WNBA stuff. Okay. I know that Brianna Stewart was talking about, um, you know, putting her own money into having teams charter yeah. because it's kind of ridiculous. Yeah. Um, and then I know Kyrie Irving kind of got involved with that. <laughs> so I think as WNBA commissioner, it should be looked into um, how they can help the, the girls, like yeah. the women, sorry, yeah. not girls, women, how they can help the women um, because they have the solutions. They live it every day, yeah. you know, and so to be able to help them and see what they need, they got to be listened to. And I think that 
it's slowly getting there, you know, after all these years, but it's, it's really exciting to watch. I love the WNBA, you know, it's, it's, it's an extreme level of basketball. It's the highest level, yeah. so. I am fired up for a team in Oakland, too. Yeah, so I think that'd be awesome. I hope to make that happen. Yeah. Ellie, thank, thank you for you. joining me. Thank you, I appreciate it. For the awesome. scale spotlight for February. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you.